Idontic treatment, dental monitoring. DM is an exclusive and unique APP whereby using artificial intelligence allow us to take perfect control of orthodontic treatment. With virtual appointments, we can watch the patient every day, week or months in virtual appointments using dental monitoring scan box. And now, after this technological approach, I propose to share with you all the workflow and explore the new trends on orthodontics. Okay, so I always like to start with this small movie because I think that the time for the change is now. I think that the COVID situation allows me to think in many things, but for sure what we think that the future will be digital, I think it's not the future, it's the present. And now more than ever, we need to work the digital way. We need to work remotely. And I think that maybe in the near future, we will not have to touch the patient. So in a very few months, I think that we will do orthodontic treatment without touching the patient. And as I told you, because of that, I transformed my course that was the master liner. We did it in Portugal and in some countries in Europe on an online academy that we want to share with everyone. This is exactly the word share. We want to share our knowledge. We design a low cost uh, program and we want to get doctors from all over the world. So I started this project with one of my best friends who is the one of the Portuguese speakers, Isabel Flores. We did this project together and we start talking with many doctors from all over the world. And I'm sure that most of you know them because they are considered the best orthodontists when we talk about aligners. So nowadays we have more than 25 speakers and I think in the near future we will be almost 40 speakers to speak during one year. So we decided to do two live lessons every month. They will be on Tuesday not at night here on Lisbon time. And because we are doing this all, all over the world, we will record all the sessions. So, for example, if you are in India and at 9 p.m. Lisbon time is not a good time for you to watch the live session, you can watch it whenever you want because they will still record for 30 days. And I can't uh, talk about this without talking about one of my Indian friends, which is Dr. Kotari, that everyone knows. And he has the same way of being as I had during my orthodontic life. So we always think in being one step ahead. I think he's almost 10 steps ahead. And as you can see, during many years, he worked with Armco and with Damon System exactly as I did. And nowadays, I think he's one of the top providers in your country, exactly the same as I am in my country. So I have no doubt that the future will be aligners. As I told you, all, all our sessions will be record. We will have, we'll have also during every month some bonus webinars. These bonus webinars will be made by other speakers that we will invite and we will have for free the opportunity to listen to these webinars. And also we create a special program that uh, we will talk today. The most important thing when we talk about aligners that are the clean check reviews. So for each doctor, we will do a clean check review for free every month. So I think it's a great way of learning, 
sharing and don't have to spend thousands of dollars in education. So we decided to put a simple program of 75 euros a month and you can have a VIP membership of one year for a single price of 75 euros a month. So let's talk about CleanCheck and I will try to share some tricks and after that I will open one of my clean checks and do it live with you the changes that we should do so first I need to tell you that there there is a study made by the aligner company Invisalign which says that 75 percent of the doctors in the world are accepting the first clean check, 75%. And that is a big problem for the brand because I can tell you that in my routine, I have seen more than 600 patients with Invisalign and I have never accepted the first clean check. So it's really impossible to get the perfect orthodontic treatment if you accept the first clean check. So you have to design your clean check. You have to create your own clean check based on your knowledge. And please do not forget that we are talking about orthodontics. And as you know, 80% of our work is diagnosed. So if you know about orthodontics, if you know about diagnose, it will be very easy for you to work with aligners because all the principles that you have when you talk about biomechanics, you will apply when you are designing a clean shot. So I basically like to do these five steps when I start reviewing uh, a clean shot. So first, I always look at the final position and it is very important because when you pick up the first clean check, if you don't pay attention to the, the final position, maybe it is not what you want for your patient. So why will I work on a clean check if I don't like the final position? So that's the first thing I look. And if I don't like, I restart it again. And another trick that I need to tell you here is, please, I don't know if you are using Itero scanner or, or, or any scanner or if you are doing impressions but it's very very important to give the technician the correct initial occlusion because there's a lot of problems on that position sometimes even using the Itero the patient doesn't close on the correct position and you are sending the, the, the impressions to the technician in a bad occlusional position. So all the treatment will be designed from a wrong start position. How can you deal with that? What are my tips for that? If you are using impressions, please, you have to send for example, a gum with the position of the correct occlusion so that can, they can understand the real occlusion of the patient and they can put it on the computer. If you are working with the iTero, it's easier, of course, but you should be very careful doing the last phase of the um, uh, scanner to see if right side and the left side are in the correct position. That will obviously be basic to start a treatment plan. Then we can talk about IPR and stripping. And we, this, we, we can do a one-day course when we talk about IPR. First, for the ones that are just starting working with aligners, and I used to, to work with braces, it's quite different because, let's think about it, 
when we work with races and we program to do IPR, most of the time we just take out the contact point, but we are not putting 0.2 or 0.3 on IPR. We just do a little bit of IPR. And most of the time we do IPR during many sessions. We don't do the IPR all at the same time. It's quite different when you are talking about aligners because you have to, to be precise when we are talking about stripping. Because if you do more IPR than you program, you will have a problem because at the end you will have spaces. And on the other hand, imagine that you program 0.5 of IPR and you only do 0.1, which will be your problem you will have an intrusion of that test. And if we have an intrusion with the liners, that could be a big problem. Maybe we will need to rescan the patient and ask for new aligners, additional aligners. So you have to be very careful when we are talking about IPR. And in the clean check, you will have one more time to look at your diagnose, look at the bone, look at the gums, see where the teeth is, where the tooth is, and see if is it possible to do an IPR. Should I do IPR? When should I do the IPR? We will talk a little bit later on that. Then you have to look at the staging. What is the staging? Okay, let me help you. Maybe most of the doctors that are here know about music and know how to play, for example, piano or a guitar. And if you want to learn piano, you have to read it. So if I put some partiture in front of you, and if you are a well-known musician, you can read it exactly like you read in English. That's the same. Staging on Invisalign treatments, it's like a partitor. So you have to study it and you have to read it and understand what are we asking for. And we will check it in a few moments. Then we need to speak about attachments and Pontex. Why? Because when you are talking about uh, braces, it's very important where are you putting your brace, which is the distance between the brace and the center of resistance. Here, it's exactly the same. I need to understand what function this attachment has. Where should I put it on the mesial or on the distal of each disc? When should I put this, this attachment? So, it's the same. It's all about biomechanics and diagnosis. And then at last but not least, we have to speak about overcorrection. Why? Because when we are using aligners, we, have, we don't expect to have 100% of coincidence between the clean check and the mouse. Don't forget this sentence. Clean check represents the design of the biomechanics, nothing more. So, for example, imagine that you have in front of you a patient with an enormous deep bite. Okay? We have a very, very big deep bite. How do I want to finish this case? I want to finish with a correct overbite. So, for example, if we start with an overbite of 6 millimeters, and I want to finish with an overbite of 2 millimeters, so I will need 4 millimeters of intrusion on my central incisors, for example, do you think on the clean check I should ask for 4 millimeters of intrusion on the incisors? No. 
because I know from biomechanics and I know from my experience that if I ask for four millimeters of intrusion on my clean check, I will maybe get two millimeters. So when you are designing the clean check and you have an amazing deep bite, you, you'll, uh, you will ask the technician to finish the case with an open bite. And when you look into the clean check, you'll say, whoa, this is wrong clean check because we start with a deep bite and we finish with an open bite. Yes, no problem. I'm just designing the biomechanics on the clean check. And I know that in my patient's mouth, I will get three or four millimeters of intrusion that on the clean check are like six or seven millimeters. So if you think like this, you will understand that it is completely impossible to accept the first clean check. So you have to be an orthodontist. You have to understand the diagnosis to get a good treatment with the liners. That's why I don't believe in brands that work directly to consumer because they are not using your know-how to get the finished result. Okay. So before we evaluate our clean check, we have to submit high quality records. And this is one of my big problems when I talk to orthodontists. I do a lot of courses. I do a lot of masters. I teach a lot in my life. And one of my difficulties is when most 90% of my students come to me and ask for help with the diagnosis of any case, they don't have good photos and they don't have good impressions. So please, it's so easy to do it. You have to send to a line perfect photos so that the technician can understand your case or it's impossible to start a case with bad records because probably you will have a wrong clean check so be careful on the quality of your records and it's not so easy to do good photos but it's just a question of trying so if you photo every day all your patients you will get good records in a few days. Okay, another very important thing. If you want to submit a case on your IDS, you can take like two minutes just answering the questions as fast as you can, put the records and send the case. So you are not giving any detail to the technician on a line technology. Other, on the other side, if you try to send, answer every question, be precious. I will give you a small example. Imagine one more time that you have a deep bite, the same deep bite that we were talking earlier. And you know that there is a question on the IDS that says, how do you want to solve your deep bite? And there's so many ways to solve a deep bite. We can extrude the posteriors, we can intrude the anteriors, we can do both. So if you don't explain the technician, how do you want to solve your deep bite? How can he do it? Because he will not look at your patient's face. He will not see if we have a gummy smile. He just knows how on a computer to correct a deep bite. But should this be your treatment or no? So this cannot be a question of luck. Oh, I have a good technician and he's doing everything okay. It's a question of luck. No. So I have to send every detail 
every information to help my clinician. So your treatment plan is like a roadmap. If I want to explain you that I want to go from my city to your country, I have to have a roadmap. Otherwise, I can go going around the world until I reach India. So please focus on this. Focus on help the technician and explain what do you want based on your uh, simply diagnose. Okay. So be detailed when you are treating planning. This is exactly what I, I finished to, to tell you. Another thing that is very important, it's in every treatment, you have your, what I call your treatment preferences. So for example, you can say that in your deep bite cases, you always want to start intruding the incisors, for example. So, if you don't say nothing, the technician will always use your treatment preference as a reference. But imagine that in some cases, you want to extrude the posterior first. So, if extrude the posterior first are not a treatment preference, you have to write it to your technician or you will not do it, okay? And don't forget that everything that you write on the last question of your IDS, it's always the first thing that they will read. So, for example, if you have on your preference that you will not do IPR in your cases, and you don't say nothing to your technician, they will not do IPR in any of your cases. But, for example, in some cases, I want to start with IPR on a liner one. So I have to write it on the last question. And they will have, get an alert and they will say, wow, here in this case, the doctor is asking for IPR at a liner one. But then, if you send another case and you don't say nothing about IPR, they will come back to your preferences and they say, okay, this doctor doesn't want to do IPR. Never. So we have to create a clean check without IPR. Okay? I hope you understand it. So, another important thing. When you are planning to use auxiliary techniques, for example, TADS, that we use a lot when we talk about aligners, your te technician doesn't know that you are using TADS. And it doesn't have nothing to do with that. So, how will you deal with that? For example, let's imagine we want the intrusion of 5 millimeters on a upper incisor. Do you think that with simply using aligners you can reach five millimeters of intrusion? No, it's impossible. But if you ask on your clean shack to intrude the incisors five millimeters, when you look at the clean shack, it will be five millimeters intruded. Will you believe it? No, but it's not a problem because you know that in that patient, you ask that because you will use that. So the only thing that the line will tell you is they will put like a black mark on your teeth. They are saying, hey, doctor, attention. This is not a predictable movement. So if you want to do it, we do it. But maybe you will need some auxiliary technique. So that's the only thing we will tell you. But if you approve it, in your clean shack, the five millimeters will appear. And of course, they 
understand that you are using another technique. Okay, I will pick up a clean check so that I can understand and help you to understand what I've been saying until now. Let's look at this. This clean check is from my daughter. So she has a little class too because she has a small mandibula. She is 10 years old and I ask Invisalign to design the treatment for her. And look at this plan. Let's give a look. We start with 29 aligners, retrieve the upper incisors, expanding all the arch, and finish with a great expansion and a perfect class one with a perfect overdress and overbite relation. So I think that maybe lots of doctors, after looking at this clean check, they could believe this would be possible, this would be great. So why didn't I accept this first clean check? Okay, let's watch it again. Look, we, we will completely change the arch form. We will close for the stemmas and we will create space for the eruption of the cannon. So, look at the amount of retrusion on the upper arch. That's why I always focus on this. Don't forget, you are orthodontists. You know about diagnose. So you know that after I retrude so much these incisors, maybe I will have problems with the profile. But for the technician, it doesn't have any information about the profile you will not look at the profile. You will not look at the face of your patients, not even to the photos. So, if you ask him to correct the class one, the, the class two into a class one, maybe in his mind, this is the best solution. So, doing this, and you don't know my daughter's profile, you just can conclude that probably we will have a big impact on her upper lip. Now let's look at her face and understand if we want that or no. So as I told you, 75% of the doctors in the world accept or approve the first clean check. And unfortunately, most of them don't look at the profile. So, please do not say that aligners don't work. They, of course they work, but we have to be the driver, okay? Drive your treatments, don't accept that a technician is doing your work. So let's look at her face. Look at this lower incisor. Look at the upper lip. The nasolabial angle is really good. So the problem is on the lower arch. So of course we have to correct the torque of the lower incisors we need to get over jet and then ask for advancement on the lower arch. So the first clean check is really wrong, is really bad. And do you know why? Because I don't send the correct information to the technician. So he's trying his best, 
that's my fault, not his fault. Okay? It's very important that you understand this. Okay, so after an orthodontic study, after under understanding what we want from the technician, we can redesign this clean check. So what changes did I ask the technician? So I always start talking with them, hello team, please do the next changes. So the final position of the upper incisors, please look at the stage four of the clean check and follow the position of Titus number 21. Do you understand what is being precise? If you send this information to any technician, they will understand it because they know that they pick up the clean check, the first one. They go to stage four, aligner four. Let's see where is tooth number 21. Okay, this is the final position that the doctor wants. So we will follow all the incisors, all the upper incisors by this specific position. So there is no doubt the amount of torque the amount of tip, the AP relation is perfect when you send this to your technician. Then I told them to follow on a liner eight, tooth number 16 and 26. So they will know the final position of my upper molars. Then I spoke about the lower incisors because if I want to correct the class two, and if I want to advance my mandibular, I need to retrude a little bit the incisor, get over jet, and then I can use elastics or mandibular advancement. Okay? And then I told them, okay, after you finish this alignment phase, you can now put the future of mandibular advancement on my aligners. So I will do like, 80 weeks of eight aligners without mandibular advance, and then I will ask them to advance the mandibular. And I will also tell my technician how should we finish the case. And look what I, I wrote to him. I asked him to finish with center midlines, but with a position of edge to edge. And you say, are you crazy? Are you going to finish a cage edge to edge? Yes, because this is a virtual position. So what am I asking on my clean check is please create a virtual position, create a force system that put my mandibular as advanced as you can. Because I know that in my daughter's mouth, that will not be the result. So at the end, she will have a perfect class one with two millimeters of overjet and overbite. Do you understand now? So this is basically what you have to explain to the technicians to get a perfect clean check. So after this, they send me a new clean check. Look at it. So we start expanding. We reduce just a little bit the inclination of the upper incisors. And then I ask them to advance the mandible. And now we have a clean check of 40 aligners, 40 weeks. So now I can look at the final position and I can imagine now that, okay, I will not have problems with the upper lip and I will have the mandible on the correct position that I asked for. Okay. So then they will send me the aligners and we start the case. So 
As I told you, CleanCheck is a virtual representation of a treatment plan. Don't think that you will get in mouse the same image that you are getting on CleanCheck. Another important thing, and most of the doctor, doctors don't take care about it, is when you receive your first clean check, there's a lot of comments on the right side of your, your dashboard. Um, and most of the doctors don't read it. It's very important because most of the time have very important information. Sometimes they talk about the distortion of one or two teeth. So you have to be careful reading it and giving the correct info or you will not have a, a perfect final position. Okay, this is also very important because if you ask Invisalign to protrude an incisor 20 or 30 degrees, they will do it virtually. But is it real? Is it possible on the three wheel world? And this is the next change that will come into our offices. I am using CBCT and a scanner, but for now Invisalign is not allowing us to put it together. I think that during this year, maybe on the next months, we will have very good news on that. So, we will design our treatment plans based on the 3D position of the teeth, of the bone and the gums. And this is the real world. So imagine that beside you get a perfect occlusion, you will start planning your, your cases based on the root position, on the 3D root position. And this is probably the next change and it will be very easy to create a good clean check if you are working on 3D world, okay? Okay, so that's exactly what, what I, I, I told you. And don't forget that nowadays the technicians are only looking at the crowns, not looking at the roots. So, for example, another trick that, ca that I can give you. Sometimes when you look at, at a panoramic x-ray, you see that one of the roots, let's imagine teeth number 11, has uh, 10 degrees of tip. So, you look at the root and you see that, wow, this root is moved distally. How can I explain a technician? that is only working with grounds, that I want to correct the position of the root. It's not so easy. So it's all about what are you writing to your technician. For example, if I want to correct the 10 degrees of a root, I have to write it on my notes and I will tell the technician, please, on this number, 11, please give me 10 degrees of tip moving the root medial. Okay? So if you give a number, you can't talk with them saying, please correct the tip. That is nothing. You have to say, please give me 10 degrees, 15, 20, whatever you want. But you have to tell him what you want so that he can manage on the computer and design, for example, the correct attachment to achieve that kind of movement, okay? That's very important to control and monitorize the treatments. As I told you at the beginning on my small movie, I am using dental monitoring and it's an amazing feature which allowed me to control the treatment every week. My patients are doing scanner, home scanner with their phones at home every week. So I'm always controlling the fitting of the aligners and 
at the end, I will have less appointments, more control, and less additional aligners because I'm always watching him and I can compare my treatment plan with the results that I'm getting in mouse. So let's see the five steps we have 15 minutes. About the final uh, positions, I've already told you. Don't forget that you need to watch the bone, the gums, and understand on the 3D position if the, pos the final position that Invisalign is sending to you is possible on a real world. Take very care of that. If you could use the CBCT, it's easier and it's very important because sometimes, and I have cases that weren't going so good because I don't take good care on the final position and during the treatment, I had to deal with gum retraction, for example, because I was putting the teeth completely out of the bone, okay? And that is completely our fault and not Invisalign fault. Okay, about IPR, as I told you, we have to decide when do you want the IPR. For example, I, like, I never do IPR on the first appointment because if I will put attachments, I don't, ha I don't like to do both things at the same time. But, for example, if you have a patient, a class 3 patient, with lower uh, problems and I don't want any protrusion of the lower incisors and I have crowding, obviously I have to do the IPR on stage one. So I have to write to my technician, please, in this case, start with IPR on aligner one. And I can decide the amount of IPR that I want to do it, okay? It's me who decide, not the system. Okay. Staging. Another, this is a topic that I have hours of, of lessons because staging is the key. It's completely different. For example, if we are talking about expansion, it's completely different to expand molars first or all the T's at the same time. Do you know why? Because if you expand all the T's at the same time on your upper incisors, you will have a big detrusion. If, on the other hand, you don't want to retrude your upper incisors, you can do it step by step. So you can change the staging and ask for molars move first and then the lateral side. So controlling the staging, understanding the staging, learning how to read the staging is the key to get a perfect uh, clean check and the perfect treatment. Okay, what about attachments. As you know, Invisalign always put optimized attachments in your cases. Do they work? Do you need to change it? Wow, this is another big topic. We'll talk a lot on our master about attachments, changing the attachments, changing the position of the attachment, putting attachment on the lingual surfaces. So it's very important. There's many schools when we talk about attachments. You will have, if you, if you enter our master, for example, you will li listen to Enzo Pacciuti. For me, it's, it's one of the best orthodontists I've ever met. He's an Italian guy. And he changes 
all the protocols on attachments. He have his own attachments, his own designed attachments. It's possible to do it and with incredible results and with very small number of additional aligners. So, which means that he has an efficiency very big compared with other doctors. So, another thing is that in your clean check, using the control 3D, we can change every attachment. We can redesign it. We can put it bigger. We can put it smaller. We can copy. So there's a lot of things we can do with attachments. And I hope that if you come to, into the master, you will understand it. And at the end, over correction. And when we talk about over correction, there's a lot of things we can, when we can talk about. For example, the power chain effect and the C chain effect. I don't know if you know the difference between these two concepts, but they are quite important. When we ask for overcorrection aligners, for example, if you have a case with spaces, it's very important to ask for overcorrection. What will this overcorrection do in, in your mouse? or in your patient's mouth. Basically, if you, work, if you ask for a power chain effect, you will have exactly the same solution that you use in braces when you put a power chain from six to six. So you will close all the spaces. And it is possible to ask for one of these overcorrection aligners. And it works really well. And you can ask, for example, if you just, if you have a perfect class one, you don't have any spaces between the sixth and the fifth, or between the canon and the fourth. So you don't want to change that. And you have a good expansion. So if you put some power chain effects, maybe you can lose the effect of expansion that you get. So in these cases, I ask for C chain effect. That is also an overcorrection feature, but it will only work between canons, and it really works. And beside that, don't forget that we only achieve like 80% of what we design on the clean check. So doing overcorrection is a warranty of a perfect final position in mouse. So if you have an open bite, ask for a big deep bite at the end to get a perfect overjet and overbite. Okay. So I'm here for 55 minutes. I'm free now to, to your questions, whatever you want. Thank you so much. I don't know if you prefer to open the question and answer on yeah, the yeah, right sure. mode. Okay. Sure, we are, we are open for question and answer. A few of the questions I have already answered, but even then I'll read out, you can ah, okay. your opinion as well. Uh, the first okay. question which I answered was Dr. Amruta Chandak. She wanted to ask, can you please put some light on the tooth numbering system? followed by clean check. So I said it is it is your choice, whichever system you would like to have. Yes. Right. Then there was a question from Dr. Sunny Gupta. How can we avoid posterior bite opening, which usually may, may happen due to biting aligner thickness, generally posterior bite opening, like open bite, which happens at the end of the treatment most of the time. Okay. So, my take on that was that we can give a compensatory extrusive uh, attachment on the premolars, which of course. can help, or else anything you because you are a master. Uh. <laughs> okay, first, basically, if you do a correct clean check, if you ask for the correct attachments, and the staging is perfect, 
it's not used. It's, we don't have so many open bytes on the posterior side. Which cases do I have sometimes open bytes on the posterior side? For example, imagine that you have a class 2 with deep byte and the incisors are, as usual, retroclined. Most of the doctors, or some doctors, start correcting the AP uh, problem very early. So, first, you have to protrude the incisors and retrude the lower ones to get over jet, and then you can start using elastics. If you don't do this, and you start very early with your elastics, you will have a posterior open bite. That's an example. But once more, this is because we don't plan a correct staging. So if you have a correct staging, a correct treatment plan, you will not get it. Another problem is sometimes when, imagine you have an upper lateral incisor retruded and you need to open the space, bring the lateral in, and correct the bite. And sometimes when we are bringing the lateral to the arch, we will get, have uh, uh, an open bite. And how can we control it? Another thing that is possible to do is to ask for button cutouts put some buttons and use elastics during the night at least. Uh, I don't like to use elastics full day. Don't forget that we are talking about aesthetic treatments and these kind of patients ask for aligners because they don't want braces, they don't want elastics. So we have to be very careful on the managing of these features. So. If I have to use elastics, and in many cases I use, I ask them to use only during the night, during eight hours a day, which is better than nothing. Okay. The next question is from Dr. Shravan Shetty regarding overcorrection. Mm -hmm. Basically wants to know how much overcorrection should be done. Suppose if you have a 5 mm of diastema, uh, and, and you're doing it by mesializing the centrals. So how much overcorrection uh, would you prefer to okay. give? About the diastema, the midline diastema, I, ha I would like to say two things. First, there is no other system that is so easy to close a diastema because when you talk about braces, let's think a case that we are treating with braces with a 5 millimeter diastema. Okay, let's imagine that you are starting, for example, with the Damon system. We start with a 0 0.14 arch wire, then we put the 14.25, then we put the 16.25, then we put the 18.25, and then we come to stand still and put the 19.25. And only when you reach the 19.25, you will put a power chain and you will start closing your diastema because you need like a body movement of all the teeth. Now imagine that when are, we are using aligners, we can close the diastema from the first aligner because I have all the aligner covering the crown. So it's very easy to do a body movement. So when I, when I do a case like what you were saying, I can't answer you how much will I ask for um, overcorrection because as I started, I will see how it goes. And imagine that after 30 aligners, I have my case almost done and there is, there is still one millimeter of uh, diastema. And now I, I will ask for overcorrection. So only at the end I will see how much I need and how many aligners will I ask for. I just tell the technician, please close all the spaces, but take care that I want a surface on contact. I don't want to have just one contact point. 
So sometimes I have to do a little bit of IPR and write it. Please do IPR, take out the contact point and give me a complete surface. Okay? That works really well. And when you ask in these cases for um, over, over treatment aligners, you, can, you don't have to use them all. So it's like, like using a power chain. You try it, use it for one or two weeks, and you will see if the DSTM is completely closed. And if it is not, okay, I can put the second one. But sometimes I only need one aligner for overcorrection. Okay. Uh, in this case, like suppose in diastema, generally Invisalign gives us an optimized root control attachment. Mm -hmm. This side and like suppose one is on yes. the mesial and one on the distal which is up. If I have a five millimeters, which is for me a very big diastema, I will change the attachment for a vertical one. Exactly. The that's what I was, vertical one. That's what I was thinking about. Yes. And uh, you, you make it a little thicker or you would prefer a little thicker or... Uh, Thinner one. The, thin bigger one. The, bigger the, one. the bigger one. The bigger one. The bigger one. Okay. Thank you. And uh, would you uh, advise a little bit of overcorrection even with that also so that... Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And okay. one more trick. Sometimes that my patients are very focused on statics and if they don't accept the vertical one so big and so unstatic, I ask a line to put on the lingual surface. Lingual surface, perfect. And it you, really you works. You think alike. I, I also started giving it after. <laughs> Sometimes you have problems with, with bite because uh, uh, sometimes the lower arch will bite the, the, the attachment, but it really works for works well. ethics. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Dr. Anupa Magarwal. Invisalign Visivis aligners made by three shape of plan maker aligner software. What's your take? What is vis a vis? He is asking like aligners made by three shape plan maker or Invisalign aligner software. I, I, I just know Invisalign and I only use iTero. Okay. I don't know how is in India, but here in Portugal. We are not allowed to use other um, scanners. We, for we are allowed with three shape. Uh, I see. Yeah, I think three shape three is the one that still works. Yes. yes. The new one doesn't work. The, yeah, that's it. Uh, the same. Doctor Rohit Kulakshetra, Shrista, uh, which attachment do you prefer, the optimized one <laughs> or conventional one? It's completely impossible to answer your question. There are cases where optimizes work perfect. And there are cases that you need to change to conventional attachments. It's, and when, it's... when you change it to conventional, you prefer the bigger one? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Especially on molars. Molars. Anupam Agarwal again. Kindly share your preferred staging pattern in class 2 division 1. Upper first premolar <laughs> extraction case. Okay. Uh, uh, let me explain you one thing. I, I know that in India, and I, I follow some cases, or some of your cases on, on, on the social media, and I know that you do a lot of extractions. Excellent. Here in the south of Europe, we don't, we, it's very, I can tell that in, in, in 100 cases, I have one with extractions. Okay. So, so it's I am not, not your, the your, correct speaker to talk to yeah, you about yeah, extraction you. cases. We okay. will have we will have Kenji Kojima that is the one on, on extractions and you will listen to him if you want. He's better he has an enormous experience. Okay. Uh, how do you add label to talk There's about another labels. question here. Uh, yeah, how how do you how do you uh, add labial root talk on the upper laterals when they are moved mm -hmm. through the bite in anterior cross bite case? Like suppose uh, lateral incisor is lingually locked and you're taking it out. So how do you uh, give a talk? Whether you give a talk with the power okay. region of the palatal side? Okay, let me explain you how I do that first. 
the first trick is to get the space. So before I try to bring the lateral on, on board, I first open the space, exactly the same that I did on the past with uh, braces. I put a coil and I open the space and then I use a double arch option to pick up the lateral. Here is exactly the same. And how do I do it? So first, I will say to Invisalign, please forget the lateral, ignore the lateral, open a space of seven millimeters for the lateral, and then I ask for new aligners, and I ask them to put the lateral on the aligner. Then you ask me which, um, which uh, attachment would I choose. I would choose a rectangular attachment because the most important thing is to don't have these adjustments. So if the fitting is perfect and if you ask them for a body movement, the this will be perfect on your arch. So just create the space, get a perfect fit, use a big rectangular attachment and it will come to you. About the, the um, you asked me another question was? It was about uh, how do you give a power talk? reach, the power reach. Yeah, power reach. I don't have a very good relation with power reaches. <laughs> uh, I, I learned once more with Enzo Pachuti to take out the power reach and put on the incisor board of the teeth the one rectangular um, attachment and it works really better. Okay, got it. It's just a question of fitting. If you have a perfect fitting of the aligner, you will have a perfect root control. Okay, perfect. I think uh, we are done with most of the questions. We don't have any other questions. Uh, 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 we have some panelists perfect. here, which are uh, eminent orthodontists from India. So I, I would invite uh, mm -hmm. panelists if they want to have any words uh, with Dr. Pedro or want to give any feedback about this program. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ajay. Dr. Chandrasekhar here. Uh, it was nice you arranged this program and it's definitely very useful. I just want to know, like, uh, is there any <coughs> malocclusion wherein the default staging cannot be overcome? Like, uh, Dr. Pedro suggested, like, not to accept all uh, clean checks. At the, at the first, at the first. Suppose, if I overcome that any kind of staging, yeah, at the first. Is there any staging wherein we cannot overcome the default staging? Any malocclusion wherein we cannot overcome, like we cannot overwrite what software is telling us to do. Okay. He basically wants okay. to know, Dr. Pedro, that uh, uh, hmm. would you suggest like if there are certain malocclusions, which uh, even if we modify the uh, clean check, uh, we'll not be able to achieve the results. No, uh, I think nowadays the only thing that it's difficult to achieve with the liners is when we talk about impacted teeth. This is the most difficult ones. You have to use like a hybrid system and the clean check is not so correct. Otherwise, with the changes I've been doing, I don't have any kind of malocclusion that I can say doesn't work. Okay. So you mean to say that uh, your uh, clean check is already I... uh, one which is uh, uh, which is already predicted a more movement? I don't understand the question. Like I, 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 I would say that the clean check, the first clean check which has been given by the technician Mm -hmm. would always uh, mm -hmm. include uh, more movement than actually it is predicted. Like suppose if we talk about it depends. It, it depends on what are you asking to the technician when you start your prescription. When you submit. 
because for example in most of my cases i don't ask all the orthodontic objectives at the first stage so for example if i need to expand to disrotate and to intrude on the first clean check i will ask for example them just to expand and intrude then on the additional liners, I will do the disrotation of some teeth. So if you don't ask everything at the same time, it's easier to get a better clean check. Okay. Uh, is that clear, Dr. Chandrasekhar? Uh, actually, what I wanted to ask was, suppose uh, if I want a G6 protocol example, mm -hmm. uh, suppose if G6 is given and if I have to overcome that, or mm -hmm. if I want G6, and software decides not to give, what might be the reasons? Okay. For example, basically, if you just change one attachment, for example, on the protocol, they will quit the protocol. So if you are asking them to follow some protocols, if there's only one condition that is not possible, they will not allow you to, to do it. I prefer to design my own protocols. I, I don't like to follow them. So in, in that case, uh, the optimize, uh, all the optimized attachment would go off and you will have to yes, uh, have do to your yours. own conventional yes. attachment. Yes. Great. Okay. Yes. Is it yes. clear, Dr. Chandrasekhar? Dr. Chandrasekhar? Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Any other? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Any, yeah. Any other uh, question, Dr. Chandrasekhar? Uh, any, other, any other panelists want to have any words about this program? It will be an honor for us. Yes, Dr. Shailish. Yeah, uh, uh, it, was a, it was a very nice presentation as usual, Dr. Pedro. I'm Dr. Shailish Deshmukh from Pune. We had met once when you had come to Pune. Uh, you had given a Nice talk on aligners as well as on Damon system. Uh, you were Thank invited you. by Dr. Ajit Kalia at the Rangunwala Dental College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very nice and very kind of you to share your knowledge with us. We really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. And hope Thank to you. see you very soon. <laughs> I hope I hope to be in India as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Ajay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sailor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other panelists want to have any? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. And thank you, Dr. Pedro, for, uh, you know, such a wonderful talk. Awesome. And, Your invitation. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm know just sharing. I have a friend here in Portugal. So, uh, Okay. Hope I'll just, to see you soon. I'll just share to my tomorrow's topic and uh, speaker. That's it. And then uh, I'll just, just for a second. Tomorrow we have uh, a okay. professor, Dr. Amish Mehta, who will be speaking on expanding the actins, orthodontic first. So it will be more on adjunctive orthodontics, I'm sure. The timing would be 10.30 a.m. And I would be sharing the link, Zoom link with everybody soon. Uh, I'm sure all of you would join because uh, that would be a great session. Uh, uh, Dr. Pedro, before we uh, end this meeting, I, I would like to ask your personal opinion about, uh, you know, how would this COVID, post-COVID, the orthodontics would change? I, I feel uh, a lot of digital things will come in where you, yeah. you don't need to touch. As I was. As you started with your video, which was yeah. very, very predicted and... Yeah, I think that the future of orthodontics will be remote. I have no doubt about it. I have no doubt that the future will be with aligners. All the people I know from all over the world are coming into aligners. Most of them are just starting. I know that the price is, is a problem for now, but I always like to speak about two companies that... Uh, if we look at them, maybe dentistry will go through that road. I don't know if, probably you know also Amazon, 
which is one of the biggest players nowadays. And on the last two months, they grow like 40 or 50 percent on yes. stock. And there's another company which for me is very special because it's a Portuguese company, which is Farfetch. Farfetch is the Farfetch. biggest the biggest company on luxury. They only sell luxury clothes. And you can't imagine how was their growth in two months. They on the stock they just double the value. They are selling for all over the world. So money is not a problem. The problem is the staying home. And how my I think that people of course nobody likes this situation, but the truth is you will get the positive things of being home. Exactly. And you will pay for anything to don't have to go out. True. So maybe we will do virtual appointments, maybe we will we will send the liners directly home for our patients. And the only thing that we have to deal now is when will we put the attachments on. If any of these companies can develop any system that works correctly without attachments, it's done. So that's my thought for the near future. We will have to learn to work remotely. That's what I am trying to. And that's exactly what we are doing because three or four years ago, you never thought that we will be together here today. Exactly. And we will not just the two of us, more than 200 True. doctors who were with us. So that explains everything. Even even at the company, the third third company yeah. stock, which is Zoom. Yeah. On it's the platform. Incredible. Which we are talking. <laughs> incredible. You, yeah. Before two months, nobody would have even imagined or heard about this company. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and today, today everybody is using it. So uh, the future yeah. but, is. But uh, I have a point, Ajay. If uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor Pedro, this is making all of us very lazy. You're sitting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It it's is an new. extended vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be difficult to get back to work. <laughs> so, so that's where you do more aligner cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you all for joining in. And thank you, Dr. Pedro, for spending a wonderful time with thank us. Thank you. And teaching Stay everybody. safe. Thank you for your and, time. And best best and wishes, best wishes you know, for I'm your master for aligner every... course. And uh, thank you. I would be uh, enrolling myself by tomorrow. It's thank Sunday, you. Right. And let me be the first in India. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Hope to see you soon.